Welcome to Cool to Craft. I'm Tiffany Windsor. And I'm Heidi Borchers. Is it really you? It's me. In the flesh? <laughs> is that kind of weird? <laughs> Usually I'm on the East Coast, and so I only see Heidi through video, but I just moved back to the West Coast. So she's with me now. Oh, this Yay. is so much fun to actually be here with you. And so each show that we do together now, we truly do together. Because <laughs> my studio's right back there. Mm -hmm. She's got the annex now. That I'm the Windsor annex yeah. <laughs> to Eco Heidi Studios. On today's show, we're talking about kids' crafts, and this is so much fun. I don't have kids, but I had so much fun creating my project today. I have kids, I have grandkids, <laughs> I have great-grandchildren, believe it or not, and uh, so kids is right up my alley. So what are you making on today's show? Well, it's an eco project, of course, because of Eco Heidi, but I also have a special guest, and um, you'll be it's really fun. Um, someone came and visited my studio, so I put her on air and uh, we had lots of fun doing this so uh, she's a super cool kid oops did I let the cat out of the bag <laughs> so lots of fun <laughs> and also on today's show Candace Jedrowitz created a great book for her grandson Alex this is a fabric and paper book and it has poetry in it and it's a fun story wait until you see what she has created it's very cool it's really great in celebration of her grandson who has had some medical issues from the mm. time that he was born. So it's it's really, it means a lot to Candace oh, to that's create very cool. this. And what I did is I dug into the vintage archives. Oh gosh. This is vintage? <laughs> How could that be vintage already? I found some patterns of a project that Heidi created um, vintage ago, <laughs> years ago, <laughs> and it's created with shrink plastic and they are pocket pals that the kids love. Well, the adults do too. I was going to say, I really enjoyed creating them. You know what I found in this project? It was very meditative for me. I felt like I was coloring in a coloring book. I think that's what shrink plastic and the coloring technique that you're using does. Mm -hmm. What I love is to remind everyone to craft with the kids because we're not seeing the arts and crafts in schools anymore. Right. So, right. so it's very important for us as adults, grandmas, mothers, aunts, uncles, whatever, to help these kids with their art. So don't go away, we'll be right back with today's Kids Crafts on Cool to Craft. The theme of today's Cool to Craft show is all about kids crafts. Love them. I know. And you have lots of kids to craft with. I do. I always have. I've got kids, I've got grandchildren, and I also have a great grandchild. Mm -hmm. And how often do they come into your studio? Um, you know, a couple of them live close, so I do see them pretty frequently, but um, some of them are far away. Mm -hmm. So I only like at Christmas and birthdays and things like that. But every time that you bring them into the studio to craft, they love it. They well, just eat it up. Even my, my kids, my daughter, is in quite a bit mosaicing. Mm -hmm. We need to get kids crafting more, so it's really important for all of us, including moms and grandmas and aunties, to take time with the kids mm -hmm. and craft right so what are you crafting today well I have an eco project so I'm gonna go in my studio and get it all ready for you and uh, you can get to see my run. special guest run okay. <laughs> <laughs> so as Heidi mentioned earlier in the show what she's doing today is an eco bank so I am delighted to welcome my sister eco Heidi Borchers and her special guest You call her Eco Heidi, I call her Grandma. Have you ever wondered where my grandma gets her amazing eco-ness from? Well, I got to find out firsthand. Where? The other day at lunch. Oh, that's right. We were drinking smoothies. <laughs> and then all of a sudden, <laughs> ding, the eco light bulb went off. I was just looking at this and I thought, this would make a really cool bank. It's got the hole on top of it and it opens up so you can get your money out. So then I just started thinking, and so this is what I made. This awesome eco-friendly piggy bank. How amazing is this? Isn't it cute? So from this to this, let me show you what I did. 
So here's my cup and here's my bubble lid. And the first thing we need to do is make sure it's clean and we're going to cover it. Now I have covered mine with paint, just acrylic paint, but that doesn't mean that you have to do that with yours. Use what you already have around the house. If you have fabric around the house, then you can cover it with fabric. If you're going to cover it with fabric, I suggest you use a, a spray. Tacky glue is really good. Spray the cup and then put your fabric on. Works really cool. But let me show you how I did my painting. I take a sponge, facial sponge or makeup sponge, and I just start dabbing it on. Just dab, dab, dab all over it. And I do the whole, I do the whole cup up to the, up over the rim. And then I also do the, the bubble lid. I let it dry. And if you're in a, in a classroom where you want it to dry faster, just take a hair dryer and dry one coat and then apply a second coat. Cause it always takes about two coats when you're using the sponge to put it on. So I'm going to set that aside because I already have one that's ready. Here's one that has two coats of the paint on it. Uh, next thing I want to do is to put a pattern on it. And I, I found this really cool sponge uh, material where it's really flat. And when you put it in water, it expands. Let me show you. So you can cut any shape that you want. This is just a square. And then you can use it to, to put on a pattern. So I've just got a square. Put a little bit more paint out. And you can just take the whole thing, make sure you squeeze out all your excess water. And we're just going to go into it. And just start putting our pattern. And again, you don't have to do the exact design that I'm doing. Just have fun with it. Let the kids have fun with it. And you can leave it like that. Or you can also take a brush. And I like to. I wanted to add another color to it, so I just took some blue and a fine line brush, and I just really quickly went around each square, like so. Now, also we want, we don't want to forget to put the front of the frog on. So what you do is you put a piece of tracing paper and just trace around your pattern. And you just simply take your same sponge, your facial sponge, and go in that area. This is going to be the front of the frog. And be sure you cover up your tracing line. And fill that in, all in. And now you're also going to probably need two coats of paint on this. It just depends what you like. If you like it where it's solid, then you need two coats. And then do all the rest of your little squares. Go up over the edge. And we're going to set that aside to dry, and I'll be right back. So I have my body all painted and I trimmed all the uh, sponge squares. And next thing I want to do, I'm going to kind of put this aside because it still needs a little bit of drawing. Next thing I'm going to do is make the eyes. And you need two plastic lids from water bottles. And I have glued them together, let them dry, and then you paint them. And again, it's the same kind of painting, just um, sponge on your paint. And then you're going to add some black 
flat marbles. We're going to glue them on. Let me get that out. I'm going to just open it up and I'm going to get some out with a toothpick. Sometimes this um, thick Aline's glue is hard to squeeze out of the container. It works really good. Dries quick. We're going to put those flat marbles right there for our eyeballs. We're going to set those aside to dry. Next we're going to put on some of the craft foam. I've got the craft foam feet and hands and I wanted to show you a little secret on cutting in for like the um, fingers. If you can see that I drew on just lightly in pencil my fingers and I punched the inside. That makes it where when I go to cut I don't I only have to do the outside cut and not the inside because I paper punched with my paper punch I punched the craft foam. And also on craft foam you really do need a really good pair of scissors. And just cut that. Cut that. And there I have my fingers. I'm going to trim that a little bit more. But it makes it easier where you don't have to cut in if you use that paper punch. So we have it at each end. We're going to put a spot of glue right in the back. Put the center of the hands right there. Bring them around to the front. And put a little bit of glue on the hands on the front and put them where you want. And we're going to have to hold that just for a second to get that to hold. And I'm putting on my legs now. Make sure you've got them going the right direction before you put your glue on. Now we're ready to put the mouth on. And I usually have a template that I make out of shrink plastic and I just put it on and I just take a pencil just lightly and this is where I want my mouth. And maybe I want to draw it on with, with like a Sharpie pen or I want to put on my, I have a small strip of craft foam that I've cut for the mouth. And that will give me a line of where I want to put it. A little bit more glue under there. And if you want the tongue to stick out, you're going to put a little hole right below and stick that craft foam tongue right into that hole. Push it in till you get it where you want. And you might even put a little bit of glue underneath. Now I found in my studio this cool bug, so I'm going to glue the bug onto the tongue. And I also have these little wooden hearts that 
I thought would be cute to put in his hands. And then as a final, you're going to put your, your eyes are already dried, so you're going to put your um, eyeballs on the top. Now, when you're using a thick tacky glue like this, and you want it to hold, and it's kind of a hard to hold place, let it set out a little bit, and you put a little bit more, you tilt this up a little bit more, put a little bit on this where you're going to put it, and then on the eyeballs and set it into place. Remember the um, tacky glue dries clear. And you are all set. Your hole is up here to put your money in. Your cap, when everything's dry, comes off. The perfect eco project for kids or make one yourself. Now that was awesome. Well, thank you. Thank you for showing us this awesome new Eco Piggy Bank. So basically, you never throw away anything. Pretty much not. You've seen my studio. It's full of awesome, amazing, eco-friendly ideas. Well, I love thank it. Thank you. You're welcome. So always remember to stay eco and always recycle. Not only that, but be sure that you recycle creatively. I'm Savannah Starr. And I'm Eco Heidi Borchers. And back to you, Aunt Tiffany. Candace Jedrowitz is our adopted sister. She sure is. <laughs> Special creative family. So we have two sisters by the name of Candace. Yeah, so it's Candace <laughs> J and Candace. <laughs> so Candace sister. <laughs> I started calling her sister Candace and I thought, well, that doesn't sound right. <laughs> that sounds very reverent, doesn't it? <laughs> so she has to be Candace sister. But today, Candace Jedrowitz is here to share a handmade book in celebration of her grandson, Alex. I'm delighted to welcome our sister, Candace Jedrowitz. Thank you, Tiffany. Hi, everyone. Welcome back to my studio. Today, I'm working on a very special project. It's a tribute to my grandson's soaring spirit. He was born with spina bifida, but that doesn't get him down. He is just the happiest kid you could ever meet. So I decided to make a book that featured him as a butterfly. I hope you enjoy it. This project started out as a poem about a butterfly. And here's my grandson, Alex. I wanted to make him the butterfly. Now this was taken when he was very young. I printed out several pictures of it and cut them out. With some, I cut off arms so that I could reposition the arms like I did in this picture here. And I also printed out some older faces. And I wanted them a little bit bigger to look a little more cartoony. Now let me show you how I made them into a butterfly. You really only need to make half of the butterfly to draw it and then fold the paper and cut it. And I loved finding all of the colors. I cut all of my butterfly wings in half so I can reposition them. And then this goes in the top part. Here's little Alex the butterfly ready to go on the cover of the book. And this is a set of pages. Each set of pages will represent two lines in the poem. And this one is, he flew right down the country lane and all around the town. And I'm going to do a little more embellishing here on the houses and all to make them really fun. And then when I'm ready, I'm going to start gluing them into the book. Now this is the cover of the book. Let me move these. It's a solid piece of material on the outside. And then I left hmm, a little more than a finger width in between. 
and glued pieces on top of them. And then I picked up some fabric that will go with this. That's the first set of pages. And when you turn, you've got this fabric for the next set. So all of these will be glued in between each of the pages, the cardboard, which, by the way, I've coated both sides with gel medium, matte, so there's less chance that they'll warp. So this one will be glued in between these two pieces here. And the idea is to leave a flap on the ends of them to attach into the spine of the book. So let's get going. I trimmed all the way around the outside of the book cover and all of the pages as well in, with pinking shears. And my plan to join the pages is this. Every other one has a flap that will glue on to the next one, that side. And I have a flap there, so this one I cut off, and that will be attached like that. And then the other side will be attached with that flap, and so on. So let's use some fabric glue. And I'm also going to go right in along the edge where the cardboard is. Oops. All right. So, boy, that really comes out. So I'm just going to use my finger. And I'm going to place this against the cardboard underneath it. And then I'm going to smooth it out. Okay, make sure the cardboards line up. Bring that back just a little bit. And that's what I'm going to do. So I'm going to glue that whole book together and then we'll assemble some pages. This is a really fun and simple page layout. I've got my background here, my greenery, my sparkling brook, and some foreground flowers. And now I have a side view of Alex. So I only used one wing and I repositioned his arms. So he's looking kind of excited. And he has the side view face. So he's flying over the water watching it sparkle. Quick and easy. Very fun. And then you add the words. This is that part of the poem right there. And I also wanted to show you, I've put aluminum foil in between the pages to let them dry. And that's been working really well too. You know, making a book is a commitment, even a small book. But if it's coming from a place of love, it's really a pleasure to do. I'm really happy with my book about my grandson, The Butterfly. Wasn't that the coolest book? It is so cool. You know, she puts so much thought and so much creativity into each one of her projects. You know what's funny is I actually try and give each of my guests and co-hosts a certain sisters. time and sisters <laughs> a certain time for your projects, like 10 minutes. When I get the video from Candace, it's like 30 minutes long. Oh, no. And I usually have to cut in because 
she does the most beautiful detail in all of her demonstrations. So. I, I didn't know you had to cut them down. I just yeah. thought, I thought, I thought it was just so cool the way that they all went together. Yes, and I love how she takes so many different, the mixed media that is so popular right mm -hmm. now. So she takes so many different materials and makes it all work. Always, mm -hmm. it always works. Right, super cool. So I do want to remind everyone that Candace Jedrowitz is our Creative Play Muse. And if you need a little bit of kick in the butt, <laughs> to <laughs> Candace your, J to can your, do it. <laughs> to get your creativity flowing, Candace J does it. And you know what she always is, encourages you to do is to send in photos of any creative projects that you're working on. You just send them to Candace at cooltocraft.com and she actually blogs about them. That's cool. Have you have you noticed all the neat projects well, that have been coming in? I have every intention of sending pictures of what I do to her, and I swear every month it just goes on to the next one. She always has a theme every month, and I'm like, oh, I forgot that one, forgot that one. So I'm definitely going to work on getting that into her. Too. You heard that here. She committed to it, so watch for... You have so many designs that you do each month. I know it's hard to like do one more thing, but well, it would mean a lot to everybody. I know. Last time I had an intention of doing... Um, I think it was shoes. She had shoes, and it's like I couldn't find the picture of it, so I just kind of kept putting it off, kept putting it off. Shoes? So. That's your favorite. I know. That's why. Topic. That's why it was like, oh my God, I I could do that. <laughs> <laughs> so maybe we'll see Heidi's shoes, but they'll just be a little bit later than the month could that be. they were supposed mm -hmm. to be. <laughs> Well, I am going to head off to my table, my design table over here, because I am doing a shrink plastic project. And I love the way that you did this, too, because every time I think about shrink plastic... Wait a minute, I you can see my little stash of stuff now. <laughs> this was hiding all of this. Oops! <laughs> every time you think about shrink plastic, I always think about oven, because when you said you were going to do shrink plastic, I thought, oh, I've got to get my oven out for you. But she didn't do it in an oven. So I'm going to head off. I need to take these over to my table. This is my family. These are my kids. <laughs> so you get to introduce me. <laughs> what okay. are you going to say? What are you going to say? <laughs> Wait, I'm stuck. <laughs> okay. Tiffany's, that was really short. <laughs> Tiffany's in her studio. So here's Tiffany with her great pocket pals. Tiff? Here are the supplies that you will need to create your pocket pal. You need a pattern, scissors, black marking pen, colored pencils, hole punch, yarn, sandpaper, a heat gun or a toaster oven or your home oven, and your opaque shrink plastic. Now this is the plastic that you can see through in order to trace your pattern, but once you shrink it, it turns white. The first step is preparing your plastic, so you will want to sand it. So sand back and forth, both directions, diagonally, so that you have a surface that the colored pencils can cling to. So continue to Sand this plastic back and forth, up and down, across, so that you have a nice finish. The next step is to trace your pattern. And I am just using the Sharpie permanent marker. And I definitely like to use this wider marker. Don't go too fine with your marker or else when it comes time to cut, it cuts that black line right off. So trace your pattern onto your plastic. And again, this is the sanded side. So here's something I learned when I was preparing my first sample on the instructions it says to flip pattern for the other half. Well I just flipped my plastic for the other half so what that means is that you end up with half a pattern on the front of your plastic and half a pattern on the back of your plastic. Now because when this shrinks you can't see the pattern from the front to the back so it's not going to matter 
but it looks a little odd. So take the time before you start your project to actually trace out your complete pattern. Or else you can do like I did, and I'll show you how I kind of fixed this. Alright, so you get the idea here that we are simply tracing that pattern. But what you need to do now is go back over to the sanded side and trace back over where you've drawn on the back of your plastic. And that also means that you need to do the same thing on the back so that you have at least a full pattern on the back. But again, do as I say, not as I do, and trace yourself off a full pattern so that you have that to completely trace on the front of your plastic. The next step is to color your pattern with your colored pencils. And this is so cool because you have sanded this those colored pencils will adhere right to that plastic. They kind of stick in the grooves. I also found that I do like to color in one direction. Of course, this is the, the big kid in me coloring. <laughs> Younger kids might not care which direction that they color, but the bit of the perfectionist in me. I, when, what I saw when I shrank this plastic is that you could see the direction of the pencil strokes. So decide how you want or the kids want to color this pattern. Honestly, I, this is like going back to childhood and doing your coloring book coloring. I found it really meditative when I was making my samples, it's like, I love this idea of just sitting here and coloring. You know what you might think about also? Is to prepare several of these, have them traced out. So when the kids say, I have nothing to do, Mom, you can grab them out and grab your colored pencils and you can set them down and they can color up some pocket pals. I'm going to continue coloring here until this is finished and then we will go on to our next step, which is cutting it out. Okay, I am finishing up the coloring on my Pocket Pal, and a couple of other hints I wanted to tell you when selecting your colors, remember that when this shrinks, that the colors do intensify. So if you pick a really dark color to begin with and it shrinks down, it may be darker than what you would like. And you need to put a pretty solid coat of that colored pencil on here. Any place that you do see the plastic showing through, when it shrinks, you will see some of that white showing through. So I'm coming back just to be sure that I have all the color that I want. You may notice that I did not put eyelashes on my little girl yet. What I found in creating my samples is that when I did the eyelashes before I colored the face, they tended to smear. So I am going to turn this around so I make sure I get these the direction that I want. I also come back and overline that black because I have colored over part of it. You can also do this after it shrinks, but it's just as easy to do that right now. The other thing that you want to do, and we will get to that after we cut it out, is to be sure to punch your holes. Anytime you need to punch any holes, do it before it shrinks. So that's what these little marks here are for, is to punch our holes. Also, this part goes down into your pocket so that I didn't color it all the way down because you're not going to see that. So take your scissors and cut on the outside of that black line.
If you cut away too much of the black, you can just grab your marking pen and come back in and clean up that line. Again, I'm not worrying about it at the bottom because we don't see that part. What I do want to do is cut to the point where you can see where I cut out her arms so that she has a way to grab onto your pocket. I think in addition to just putting this on clothing pockets, this would make really cute bookmarks or you can put them into plants. You could have a very cheerful look to your house plants. So on the pattern, it does show that our cutting line is the dotted line, which is right around her hands and her arms. See this point right here? It's it's too sharp. And so what I because it's going into the pocket, I can just cut it off. You're not going to, to see that. I can just round it out. Here's a hint too. You don't have to cut from the front, remember. Makes it much easier if you just turn your piece over to cut. And what I want is Hiko Heidi to tell you her hints about cutting, which she has taught me. We'll talk about that after my demo. Because there are techniques to using your scissors that make it much easier to control your scissors. So we'll be sure that Eco Heidi talks about that. Rounding off this edge also. And I can see along the edge here that I do have still a little bit of plastic showing. As I mentioned, you always want to be sure and do your hole punching before you shrink your plastic. So I'm following, following the dots that I placed on here and punch that out. And on this particular pocket pal, I want to put more hair on her than what the original pattern. So I'm going to come back and actually punch a hole in between each of these. And hopefully this shall work. What happens if you get these holes too close together is that plastic can tend to tear when it's shrinking. But we should be fine. Okay, so she has been sanded. We have colored her with our colored pencils, cut her out. So now it's time to shrink. And as I mentioned, you can use a toaster oven or a home oven. Let's see, I want to fix this here while I'm chatting. You can use a toaster oven or a home oven, but I love to show you how this shrinks, and it's hard for me to do that so that you can see it in a toaster oven. So I'm going to use my heat gun. And heat gun is really great for small pieces, not so great for a piece this size, but we're going to make it work today. And I just realized that I forgot my wooden skewer, so I'm going to grab that real quickly. Okay, this is what I use in order to hold my plastic down, first of all, so that it doesn't blow off the table. And also, it's going to help me as we start shrinking this piece.
fun to watch it shrink. As I was watching, I was thinking, we should make pocket monsters and not shrink them all the way. What you need to do next is you need to grab a piece of cardboard, which I don't have at my work table either, so I'm going to have to go grab, run and grab that. And we're going to heat this back up so that the, the arms will be raised in order to fit them into the pocket. So I don't have a piece of cardboard, but I do have some several thicknesses of paper, so that will work. Sometimes you do need to be careful because if the pieces heat up too much, they can stick to each other. You could see I was able to pull that apart. What I want to do is I want to heat up this little hand just a little bit more so that it will lay down. Cute, cute, cute. So she's just going to sit here for a minute or so and cool down, and then we are going to add her hair. I have started my yarn here, and I have one more piece to add. And what you do is you work on the back side, you fold your yarn in half, and use your skewer to feed that fold down in through the hole. Give it a good press and pull it through the front and then of course you just thread those ends back through that loop. <laughs> oh my gosh, she is so cute. Wild hair. If you wanted to, you could make, of course, different hairstyles. Give her a big puffy ponytail. <laughs> There you go. So there's so many different looks that you can create. And we're also offering the pattern for the little teddy bear. So you have something that um, the boys, the little boys might enjoy along with the girls. So have some fun with a mommy and me crafting time and create your very own pocket pals. So is this me and this is you? Wait, which which is who? Were you pointing at the teddy bear? <laughs> I was kind of pointing at this color hair. <laughs> that would be me. That would be me. So, so I'm the ponytail then. Okay. Okay. So let's see. <laughs> that, see. You know what? I could get addicted to making a whole family of these. You could. Did you notice that I put like little flowers and decorated you, the little dress? You got very creative. I know. So cool. Well, thank you for letting me reshare this project that that you made it's very cool years and, and years i don't even want to tell you how many ago. years ago that i did those oh come on you want to know we know your vintage when was I it i think it was about believe it or not about 35 years ago that i first did that one in a in aline's mama aline's it was a children's book there you have it it is vintage, <laughs> vintage <yeah. laughs> so just in case anyone has just joined us and you've missed any part of today's show let's do a quick recap Okay, first I did an eco frog bank and uh, my special guest with my granddaughter Savannah Starr and we had lots of fun. <laughs> and Candace Jesuits created a handmade fabric and paper book in celebration of her grandson Alex and I created pocket pals and I'm going to create dozens of these and you know I mentioned this in my segment I what I would do is I would just trace and cut a whole bunch of these out maybe 
six or twelve of these. Mm -hmm. So when the kids come by mm -hmm. and have it's, them oh, ready. Grandma, I have nothing to do. Auntie. Auntie, <laughs> that's right. That we can grab the colored pencils and then they can color their own pocket pals. That's a really good hint because that you could do that with any of the projects that you do. Always have something available for kids when they visit. So I have a request for you. Okay. I need a new pattern because if you were, were you paying attention while I was demonstrating? A little bit. Did you hear me say that we should do pocket monsters? Because if you shrink them halfway, oh, they, they make so cool, great yeah. monsters. You weren't paying also, attention also at all. Also robots were you? too, because robots are so so mm -hmm. popular. Oh, new pattern coming up okay. soon. Okay. All right. Sounds cool. We do want to invite all of you to stop by our Facebook fan page and leave your comment about today's show. We love to hear from you. You know, it's really important for us to keep in touch with everyone, and we would love it if you would just take a few moments after today's show, head on over to Cool to Craft, that's at facebook.com slash cool to craft, and leave a comment. Uh, let us know what you think. Mm -hmm. Also, don't forget that on cooltocraft.com that you can see all kinds of different ideas. Don't just think that this is the only three ideas there are. There are all kinds of ideas on cooltocraft.com. Also in our newsletter, you know, the following week from our show, we have a themed newsletter. So next week you would find the kids newsletter mm -hmm. and there's like 10 or 12 projects in each week's newsletter. So be sure that you sign up for the Cool to Craft newsletter. You can go to the homepage at Cool to Craft and you'll see the little icon. It's a graphic in the upper right hand corner that says sign up for our newsletter. Right? Right. <laughs> She's smiling at me. I was looking at the puppy out there and what he was she was <laughs> chewing on. It. She was smiling at me. It wasn't didn't have anything to do with me. The dogs are out there. <laughs> that was weird. I thought, why are you so happy? I just wasn't sure. Am I making you happy? Did I say so? Yes, you are. <laughs> so it's time for us to say goodbye and to thank all of you for joining us today on Cool to Craft. Get creative. Be cool. Get inspired. Something like that. Be cool. <laughs> Bye. Bye. -bye. <laughs>